People in Gaza and Palestine are eating grass. How are we able to be fully, 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 fully happy when we know that there's people suffering? If a religion can make you change your way of life, that's so much more powerful, you know what I mean? A hundred percent. Religion was sent for us to understand how to live as close to perfection as possible. When it comes to God, why is it that we think that that relationship is going to be handed to us? That's what religion is. It's literally a gateway to understand our Creator. If all of the water in all of the oceans in the entire world were ink for Allah's pens, the water and the ink would dry out before you could list the favors of Allah. God has literally given me everything. You die the way you live. Mm. We're seeing the pinnacle of faith. Just keep walking. Because mm. that's the only piece of advice I tell myself when I keep falling. The reason why we are the most beloved creature of Allah is because we actually turn back to Allah. You ask Allah for forgiveness because He loves to forgive. Mm. Not because He can forgive. Allah can do anything. Allah literally loves to forgive. Ramadan 2024. 2024. My days, man. At the time of this recording, it's day 20. So we're almost there, man. This one flew by. This one flew by, man. It actually made me sad. Even the prayers at nighttime, you're doing the first few, and then it's just done. Like, time is going by so fast. The Tarari? The yeah. Tarari prayers? My days, man. But what do you think, Ramadan? How's it been so far for you? If you could sum it up. Um, I've been, I don't know, like... I'm super grateful for the Ramadan, but mm. I've been more so a little disappointed with myself. Why? There's so much going on right now, and it's continuing. We all know with the like with the genocide and whatnot. Mm. Blur that word out. But I feel like with all that going on, I put too much pressure on myself to do much more this Ramadan, and then when it didn't happen, it's like a letdown. Mm. Like. You 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 you're, you think about your own humanity, <laughs> and like how privileged you are. Mm. That we all we always say that you can handle a bigger test, but then when it actually happens, it's like you can't even handle your test mm. in your on your side, mm. praying for the people who are actually suffering and struggling. Yeah. So for me, it's like the first twenty days I've been trying mentally to push myself more, but. Like, one thing that keeps me going for Ramadan is how it's always, like, it's never about how you begin. It's always about how you finish. Yeah. So, I'm just going to try to put my intentions forward and strengthen my faith throughout the last 10 days. It's a good point because we actually are at the last stretch, the last 10 days. Yeah, this is when, honestly, just push yourself as much as you can. If you feel like you're, like, lacking sleep, just, like, grind it out. If it's getting hard fasting, just grind it out because there's so many blessings and benefits in the last 10 days, man. Mm. And we talked about that, I remember, last year, that a lot of the times our issue is that we start so strong and then towards the end, we kind of like tailor off, right? Yeah. I think that's just human nature. We just get comfortable. But like, <clears throat> we got to almost train our minds to think the opposite, like, Go even more. Even if you think you started it off so strong and you did so much and da da like you have it in you to go even deeper. Yeah. Because I think that for me is what Ramadan taught me is that we have so much potential. Like we can do so much more than we give ourselves credit for. 100%. Like we can give things up for the sake of Allah, for the sake of God, like way more than we actually think. Because when you when you really think about it, we're giving up food and we're giving up water mm. from dawn to dusk. That's basic human needs. Necess yeah. Necessity. If we can give that up, imagine what else we can give up for the sake of God. Yeah. And that's why it's also said that in this month, gates of heaven are open. Devils are chained up. So everything is just what you are capable yeah, exactly. of doing. So even your desires, you can give up your <clears throat> desires. You can give up your sins. You can give up so much. But it's not just it's not just for Ramadan. But just on that, it's so crazy how people are still committing sins, even you and I, mm. in this month. Meaning, like, look at the impact that our day to day lives have had on us. If all evil is locked up and the temptations are sealed up, anything that you do in this month 
that goes against like your faith, that's on you, right? Mm -hmm. So just think about how your mind has been curated and trained over time mm -hmm. to commit these things to make it a norm. Mm -hmm. That's actually so <clears throat> true. The fact that we can recognize a change within us, that just means that we were so far gone before, yeah. which is facts, man. Exactly. I think for me specifically, though, and this is something that I've always struggled with, because for me, like Alhamdulillah, fasting hasn't ever been too difficult for me, but it's the sleep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sleep. You're, you're, for you, sleep is like, oh my gosh, man. Since university days, since high school days, you would never let anything affect your sleep. And I keep mm. telling you, sometimes, I know sleep is very important. And I love I, I'm on one side of the extreme and you're on the other side of the extreme. Mm. There's like a middle ground that you have to come to, you know? 100%. 100%. But alhamdulillah, this Ramadan, it, it, made me, it made me realize that we don't actually need sleep as much as we think. Like there's, there's almost like blessings, there's barakah that, that gets entered into your life if you give up sleep for something even greater mm. than sleep. So when I'm waking up, Early, early, early in the morning, or if I'm or if I'm staying up late at night to do the prayers, like I didn't think that I had it in me to actually be able to do it and function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, but that just goes to show, like Allah is telling you that everything, everything on the surface is one thing, but when you strive for Him, bro, He 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 literally makes everything easier for you. Yeah, honestly, but just in terms of, I guess, Islam in general. Because I think another thing that Ramadan shows us and helps us, it helps us fall in love with Islam so much more. Because our focus becomes Allah, Allah, Allah. Literally for 30 days, we start reading the Quran more. We start praying more. We start spending more time in the masjid. Just in general, how do you think Islam has affected your life and changed your life? That's a big one. It's a huge one. <clears throat> I would like literally tell myself what would my life look like without Islam, you know? Scary. Because like for me, I look at Islam and I think about what hasn't it changed? It changed the way I speak to people. It changed the way I, how I act towards people. It changed the way how I look at the concept of envy, jealousy, mm. gratefulness, mm. gratitude, um, anger. It literally shaped me to be the type of human being that makes it easier for other human beings and a type of human being where whether I have a lot in this world or not, I'll always be at a sense of peace mm. knowing that there's more. Mm. So it's just like that question, how has Islam changed you? It's like literally from one spectrum to the other, it's changed everything about my life. The way I can overcome obstacles, mm. the way I can be grateful for what I have, the way I don't have to look up. We're always taught, and I keep saying this to so many people, like, since you're a kid, you're taught to look up to people. Like, look up to who you want to be. Look up to this millionaire. Look up to this uh, successful person. But Islam tells you, don't always look up. Sometimes you should have goals to look up. But when you actually look down at people, not in that negative way, but when you're looking down at people, you understand where you are placed, making you more grateful for wh what you have above other people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like, when you're, always looking, when you're always looking up, you're just hungry. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to climb and climb and climb. Mm -hmm. And you forget about where you're at and what blessings you have above other people mm -hmm. who are literally below you mm -hmm. in terms of blessings. Mm -hmm. When I say look below you, I don't mean like, you're shunning someone for having less than you. No, you're being grateful for what you have. You know, like, we have food. People in Gaza and Palestine are eating grass. You know what I mean? So it's just like when you are about to break your fast, you should never look at that food and be upset. Mm -hmm. what, because what are you doing? You're looking down at the people in Gaza and you're seeing that they are eating grass. Yes. So why would you ever have to complain about the food that you have on your table? Exactly. So, exactly. So Islam literally shaped my entire life, my mindset, my spiritual and emotional health, my well-being, my ability to overcome obstacles, my ability to remain strong in times of adversity, my ability to 
resolve situations. For example, even with my wife, mm. like it's given me such a a better mindset and a grasp. Like even if I overreact or get upset with my wife, Islam will bring me back to a place where it's just like, all right, let's reassess what you did and let's see how that that criteria aligns with Islam. Mm. Oh, it doesn't align. You did something wrong. Mm. Oh, it does align. Great. Go have a conversation with her. Mm. So. That's why they say that Islam is <laughs> Islam is like a, a system. It's like a perfect way of life. Like I honestly view it more than a religion now. When I first entered, it was just a religion, cool. But literally, it's a blueprint. It's like a map. Yeah. You ever get lost, man? Yeah. Or like a light if you ever feel dark. That's so true, bro. And that that example that you gave of looking down, that's what literally cures depression. Oh. You know 100%. I mean? Because when you're in a state of depression, you're thinking, okay. my world is so dark. I don't have what I want. I don't have what I want. Nothing's going right. Nothing's going right. But it's like an example that I always use is someone that complains that they don't have a car. What about the person that doesn't have money for a car? Exactly. You're looking down. So you you're see what I mean? Down. The person that's complaining about, oh, I always have to take the bus. At least you have the means to afford the bus. Exactly. Oh, you have to walk to the bus? Someone can't even walk. Exactly. They're always There's always someone that has something less, less than, than you. you, which means, like you said, you should feel grateful for what you have. And that is actually so true, bro. Because even, even in university, the culture of university is that you are just grinded it out. You want the best job. You want to get the best marks. You want the best internship. You just want more, 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 more. If all you want is more, then you never have enough. Enough, exactly. You literally never have enough, bro. Your glasses so, never fall out that. You always have a hole in your cup. Always have a hole in your cup, bro. But you're so right, bro. Islam, it just centers you. Yeah. And how you said it, you put it, like, super well. Like, I stopped looking at, like, religions as religion. Like, fine, there's different beliefs and there's different religions. But if a religion can make you change your way of life, mm. that's when it's, a, like, that's what it is. Yes. Like, I think religion is that just that label. But you saying, like, this is my way of life, that's so much more powerful. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. Because, bro, when you think about it, that's the purpose of religion. <coughs> religion, because we're the ones that are flawed. God knows exactly how you should live. Allah knows exactly how yeah. you should live. Allah's perfect. God is perfect. Yep. We are imperfect. Yep. So religion was sent for us to understand how to live as close to perfection as possible. To make this life easy. But then also for you to understand the purpose of life. That it's not about here. Yeah. It's not about this dunya, this yeah. world. It's about the next life. Mm. And what can you do in this world to get you to that next life? To get you to paradise, yeah. to heaven, to the hereafter. <coughs> for me, bro, to be honest, I love, I love how we had that conversation about it's more than a religion. Because for the greater part of my life, it has strictly just been almost just like a spiritual relationship that I had with God because I grew up Christian but at a very very early age I always found it confusing and conflicting and like I always thank God for this because I don't know I don't know why I didn't just go down that path but from the moment I heard different opinions about who Jesus was I just pushed I pushed it to the side and I just thought religion was too confusing maybe when I get older I'll figure it out but it, it wasn't until you taught me about Islam that I understood that I was actually missing something. Because for so long, I thought it was just enough. I, I have my connection with God. I pray when I wake up. I pray when I go to sleep. I give thanks and give credit to God for certain things when blessings hit me. I speak to God. I'm good. That's all I need. But you told me and you showed me that Islam, the value of actually getting to know God, is something that actually enhances your life. Yeah. An example I use is, think about if you, you and your <coughs> wife, if you and your wife, I'll, I'll use you as an example. If you and your wife just know three things about each other, you know three things about her, yeah. she knows three things about you, and you just left it at that. That's it. That relationship, say it's level 20 out of 100. Okay. Imagine everything you know about your wife now in the one to two years that you've been married. It's way more than those three things. Yeah. Therefore, your relationship is so much higher. Correct. It's way yeah. greater. Yep. Now compare that to if you only knew three things. About God. No, about, oh, about oh, your wife. My wife, yeah. It'd be here and it would be here. There, yeah. That is the exact same thing when it comes to religion and when it comes to developing your relationship with God. 
your re- whatever connection you think you have, when you actually develop that relationship, it increases. Because it's like any other relationship. When you know what someone likes, when you know what someone dislikes, you know what, what they gravitate towards, when you know what pushes them away, yeah. when you know about all the great attributes that they have, all the things that they've done for other people, your relationship increases. And when your relationship increases, mm. that's when life becomes so much better. Yeah. All the things that you <clears throat> talked about. Your gratitude increases, your ability to overcome obstacles, your resiliency, yeah, everything, that's bro. That's actually so facts. It's a relationship, bro. Yeah. But that's what religion is. It's literally a gateway to understand our creator. The same way you would never just be like, oh, mom, I already know three things about you. That's all I need. Yeah. You would never do that. Yeah. Like so you would why, never do that with someone you're trying to get to marry. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So why would you do that with the one who created the person that you want to marry, who created your parents, who created you? It makes no sense. Yeah. So it is not just a, it's not just a religion because I had that mindset of, eh, whatever, like, I already know God. You and, guys- and the thing that people uh, fail, like, and I'm not pulling out any religions, but in general, like even Muslims, the, pe- the thing that people fail to realize is that in order to build a long-lasting relationship, you need to put in time, energy, effort, yes. and research, right? Like, so one thing that I'm realizing based on what you just said about uh, religion is literally building a relationship with God is that us, human beings, we're able to create, maintain, and sustain relationships with everyone and everything around us, mm-hmm. including our pets. Mm. Like you create... A relationship with your pet, meaning you understand what your pet likes, you understand what it dislikes, you understand when it goes to sleep, when it needs to use the litter, you understand when it's in pain, how. You actually spend time trying to understand it. This is just your pet. So all of these things in building relationships in your life takes time and energy. There's no way around it. An effort. An effort. You will never build a long-lasting relationship without those components, right? So when it comes to God, why is it that we think that that relationship is going to be handed to us somehow? Mm-hmm. You say that, I don't have a good relationship with God. I don't know him. I just feel like he doesn't answer me. I don't feel like he calls me. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like he's there for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I just feel distant from him. So let me ask you, what have you done to get to know your God, mm-hmm. to build that relationship? Mm-hmm. So that you know his characteristics. You know how he's the all merciful, all, all knowing, mm-hmm. all caring, mm-hmm. the sustainer, the provider. Mm-hmm. How, like, if you don't know these things about him, you can't expect that because you don't expect that from anyone else in this world. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's just like, bro, Islam is so practical that everything in the religion, you apply to your day-to-day life. And if you, you do it in this day-to-day life, that's the same methodology you use in that yeah. t- game. You know what I mean? 100%. You know what I think it is? When I really think about it, I think it's, I think it's a lack of gratitude. Because... For me, the thing that woke me up and made me even have that desire to put in that effort and mm. to put in that time is when I went through the, the most hectic trial, at least for me. It was a massive trial, but it took, it took me being at the lowest of low to realize that all those friends, the, my pets, the boss, everything, yeah. they couldn't help me. No. I couldn't help myself. So I had no choice but to turn to the God that I so-called love, yeah. right? It took me being in that dark state for me to actually realize that God has literally given me everything. Has always been there. Allah has always been there. But that's what made me put in the effort. Mm. One thing I'll say though is that what I really love about Islam and what I love about reading the Quran is that you learn about God in such an easy and clear way. Like Allah makes himself, he almost reveals himself in such a beautiful way in the Quran. And he does that through his names and his attributes. Because that's how Allah tells us all the things that he does for us. The fact that he's the most merciful, the most gracious, well, all those things. Yeah. He, you literally see the names, but then you see examples that back up that name. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit about, about some of the names that, that, st- that stand up for you? One of the names recently that I've been um, really, really taking in to perspective is the name Al-Latif. Al-Latif. It means the subtle. Mm. And I tried to understand why Allah uses this name, like the subtle. Like, why would he use it? And it's, when you look at the stories of the prophets, like Yusuf, 
alayhi salam, um, and Musa alayhi salam, like all of the prophets, literally all of them, they'll all be going through hardships in their lives, right? And some of them experience and endure these hardships for years and years and years, like Yusuf. Yusuf, his brothers, you know, his brothers betrayed him, threw him down a well. He got sold for a couple of coins. He was separated from his father, and he ended up um, going to a palace and being a slave, pretty much. Um, and his his timeline is so long. He saw his father after, like, many, many, many years. Yes. And he got reunited with his family after many, many years. Allah uses the name Al-Latif when he talks about Yusuf, meaning... Whatever Yusuf is going through, Allah is there. Whatever other people are planning, like his brothers, the the emperors, everyone, Allah is also there. Mm. Allah is subtle, mm. but He is there. Mm. Meaning He is also planning. The name the the verse that comes after that is they plan and Allah plans, but Allah is the best of planners. That verse literally translates into the subtle. Mm. Meaning you don't. You can't see Allah's plan, mm. but Allah can see your plan. Mm. So that means that makes Allah by default the subtle, and you the obvious. You know what I mean? Mm. Because, so, like, if your plans are being shown and one other party's plans aren't being shown, who's subtle and who's obvious? Mm. So Allah's name subtle always comes. This one gets me because <clears throat> when I think about today, there's so much happening, and I keep refer referring back to Gaza and Palestine. And it's just like there's so much obvious things we're seeing. Mm. But then what's the other part? Mm. What's what is the subtle things that we are not seeing? Mm. Think about it. Like genuinely think about it. It took years and years and years for Allah to reveal to Yusuf that you will be victorious in what you wanted and your dream will come true, that everyone will bow down to you. Mm. His brothers came, seeked his forgiveness mm. at his feet. Mm. His father, who hasn't went blind mm -hmm. from crying, mm -hmm. got his son back. So think about how Allah is planning while everyone in that state mm -hmm. is also planning right now. Mm -hmm. Their plans are obvious. Mm -hmm. The whole world sees their plan, right? Mm -hmm. It's nothing hidden. Mm -hmm. But now think about Allah's subtleness that we don't see. That should be fearful and that should be hopeful. Two, two in one. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It should be fearful to them. Because whatever they're doing, it's already captured. Mm. And it should be hopeful to us because whatever they're doing, we, we know what Allah is doing is far greater. Yeah. So I'm going to, uh, uh, that name was pretty long, but I'll, I'm going to, that's right now. Like I have different parts in my life where I focus on certain names. And that's yeah. the beauty of why Allah gave yeah. us 99 names, you know. It's not 99 names because you should just know it all. 99 names apply to you in different parts of your life. In a real way. In a real way. In a real way. Yeah, because that's how Allah caters to literally every single person going through something. Yeah. You feel like you've sinned too much? All right, here's a name. You feel like you, you've, uh, you're you stressed? All right, here's a name. Yeah. You feel like you have no control? All right, here's a name. Yeah. There's a name for everything that you are feeling. That's Who else in this world have you heard about has 99 names? Yeah, yeah. And it's it's so funny because <laughs> when you when you start to really take in those names and actually see how it applies directly to your life, your love for God, your love for Allah increases mm -hmm. because you really start to see like He is the most subtle. I have been planning, but He's been planning too. Yeah. And His plan is far greater than anything I could have ever done for myself. That applies to me directly mm. because when we were talking about how has Islam changed you. For me, it has changed me so much in terms of, I used to be so self-reliant. I used to think that I had to be in control of everything. everything. Oh yeah. I needed to know what's coming next. I needed to know how I'm gonna do it, where I'm gonna do it, who I'm gonna do it with. That's why your stubbornness was also there. Exactly. You know that? Because if I had a plan in my head, I need to stick through it. Because I'm thinking that I put in the time to, to think about the pros and the cons. I've, I've thought it through. Mm. So I need to stick through my plan. But the situation that happened with me is that I had to be shaken to the point where I realized that I don't even know what's happening tomorrow. Yeah. I don't even know what's around the corner. As humans, we're limited. We can't even see to a certain extent. We can't hear to a certain extent. So why would you think that you know everything? Once I realized that Allah has been planning 
And it, everything that happened led me to rediscovering God through Islam. Yeah. Bro, I gave it up. I do not even want to trust myself anymore. I don't want to rely on myself. Who am I? Yeah. I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know what you're thinking right now. You don't even know what you're going to have for dinner tonight. Exactly. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm going to be alive to have dinner tonight. Yeah. So why, in what world does it make sense to rely on yourself versus that? Yeah. It makes no sense. Yeah. One of the names that I love the most <laughs> is the fact that Allah is al Karim, which is the most generous. Hmm. Literally the most generous. Why, why did you pick that one? Because... <clears throat> What Islam has done for me is it has increased my level of gratitude. And the more I develop that, because it's just a muscle, the more I develop that muscle of gratitude, the more I realize that there's so many aspects of our lives that Allah is responsible for. So much. Mm. Everything. There's so much that we are given that we just take for granted. The fact that we, that we have function in hands, the fact that we can walk, the fact that we can see, the fact that we can hear. Yeah, the most basic. The most basic. A beautiful analogy I always use is that if someone came to you and said, I will give you a million dollars for one of your eyes, no one would say yes. Yeah. Okay, fine, not a million dollars. I'll give you a billion for both. No. I'll give you a billion for just your hand. No. That means what we have is priceless. Yep. There's, no, there's literally no price for it. Yep. We're walking gazillionaires. We didn't earn it. What did we do to deserve it? Didn't deserve it either. Did we, did we write some tests to, to, to get it? No. We were just given it. Huh. That in it of itself shows how generous Allah is. And what I always try to tell people <laughs> is that, because I always hear stories of, man, like I did all this on my own. Like I had to grind it out. I had to figure it out. Oh, who man. allowed you to yeah. figure it out? Even if you think that you orchestrated your life, who allowed you to orchestrate your life? Who allowed you to walk out of your house and not get run over by a bus. Yeah. Who allowed that? Who allowed that? Because we hear stories of tragic stories of people just yeah. dropping dead. Yeah. People going through tragedies. They didn't control that. And, and just being at the wrong place at the wrong time. You know? We don't control that. Yeah. Right? So Allah is literally the most generous. So I, I literally stand by that <laughs> name. Even if you're going through the darkest of trials, you are literally being exposed to the most generous because there's wisdom and there's beauty in every yeah. single situation that happens. Everything. Yep. Because what happens? Think about your trials. What happens after the trials? Something beautiful happens. Wait, something yeah. beautiful. Yep. You learn Always. something. You learn so it's either you learn something or you learn how to cope with it in a beautiful way. Exactly. You know Allah says in the in the Quran um, about his generosity and he explains it with uh, like a couple of sentences or ayahs. He says pretty much like if all of the water in all of the oceans in the entire world. Mm -hmm. How much percent of the, the earth is water? Like 90, 76%, I believe, or mm -hmm. something. If all of the water were ink for Allah's pens, the water and the ink would dry out before you could list the favors of Allah. That is ridiculous. So think about it. And you think, you think that Allah's exaggerating or like that's just like a... That's just like a statement, like something to ponder about. It's actually facts because just with your eyes in your day, the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, you can list out an infinite amount of things that your eyes have enabled you to do that day. Mm. That's just your eyes. Mm. Your eyes enabled you to stand up. Your eyes enabled you to walk to the washroom. Mm -hmm. Your eyes enabled you to see the beauty of the sky, mm. the birds, your, your ability to look and read, mm. gain knowledge mm. and everything has branches mm. right mm. so how is that an exaggeration it's not an exaggeration that's just your eyes we're not talking about your ears saving you from certain things we're not talking about your mouth being able to speak we're not talking about your limbs we're literally just speaking about your eyes so that statement is a factual statement if you really think about it allah did not exaggerate it 100 percent. remember that video that we watched <laughs> Ali Humuda, and he was saying that the process of eating, we're only responsible mm. for 10% of that whole process. Buying the food, receiving the food, and then eating it. Yeah. We weren't responsible for the person that made the, let's use bread, for example, that made the wheat, that even was a part of the process of farming the, the wheat. We're not the ones that delivered it to the store. We're not the ones that, that packaged it. 
We're not the ones that gave ourselves the money to be able to afford it. And then after we eat, we're not the ones responsible for all the things that happen with our digestive system. We're not responsible for our kidney that turns it into, into urine and into feces. Like, we're not responsible for any of that. It just works. Just happens. We just eat. So that alone, you're so right, bro. Literally, we would never be able to count all the blessings that we are given. You can't. We can't. You can't. We literally can't, man. And that's a beautiful thing. Another name that I really love, bro, is Al Afu, which is <coughs> Allah is the eliminator of sins. And I love this name because this just shows, and to be honest, this is almost paired with Al Karim, the fact that Allah is the most generous. Most generous, yeah. Because I remember when you first told me about Islam and you told me about the fact that we have good deeds and we have bad deeds. I remember you told me that when you do a bad deed, it's just counted once. Yep. Just once. When you do a good deed, it's multiplied between 10 and I believe you said 70. Yeah. And that's not included in Ramadan, which is multiplied even more. Yeah. So we're given a system that is almost like you, you shouldn't be able to lose. Yeah. Your good deeds should outweigh your bad deeds. Yeah. But what's even more hectic <clears throat> is the fact that when you just repent, it just it gets crossed out, which is fine. Because everyone has an angel on their left and their right that records every single good deed and bad deed that yeah. you do. When you repent, it gets crossed out. But it's still in your book. Yeah. Alafu, that's another level of repentance. Yeah. Where Allah will literally eliminate it. Where not even the angels remember what's written. Yeah. It's like if you use the example of a computer. If you just press uh, control, whatever, <laughs> and delete your history, it's still in the cookies. It's still in the cache of your computer. It's still there. A hacker would be able to, to go and find it. Alifu erases every single trace. It is gone. Yeah. So now all of a sudden you have a book of good deeds and your book of bad deeds is like zero. Yeah. That's so generous. The thing you, know what that, you know what that shows? That shows that Allah, that shows that God wants us to go to paradise. 100%. We were created to go struggle, you know? And Alifu, to Warhamna. Mm. Uh, Wagfir Lana mm. and then Wafuanna. Mm. The one that you're talking about is Wafuanna. Mm. What that that is is it does eliminate the sin, but it transforms that sin also into a good deed. So it's not it's not just eliminates the sin, and takes it off your record. Yeah, literally tr transforms it. So imagine you send uh like a, a, just random numbers like a thousand times, all those thousand bad deeds would turn into good ones, but there's like. Allah Fuanna, it's like you repent and you make vows to never commit that sin again. Mm. And if you follow through with that, mm. which you, you and that's between you and God mm. and Allah, you will know that if that transformed into your good deeds. Mm. My days. <laughs> on, the, on the topic of, of repentance, you know, I realized or I learned that there's actually seven ways that we can actually get forgiveness. There's seven ways. Seven. Seven. What are they? The first one is saying astaghfirullah. Yep. Right? And that's, I would say that's like the, the gateway into repentance. Because saying that is just asking Allah to forgive you. Mm -hmm. Right? Re the second level is actually repenting. Which is not even just saying that, oh, Allah, forgive me. But making the intention that you're not going to do it again. Mm -hmm. That's two. The third one, the good deeds that you do. It actually, like you said, it replaces your bad yep, deeds. Yep. Fourth one is the fact that other people can actually repent for you, which I had no idea. What do you idea. mean other people? Really? People can actually gift you salah. They can gift you reading the Quran. Ali Hamuda, he read a bunch of hadiths that other people can actually donate services for you. That's like after you die though, right? No, in the moment, when you're alive as well. Bro. Really? I you can literally do that. I not, did not know about that. The fifth one is um, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, will be an interceder for you on the Day of Judgment, that's five. Six is that Allah is going to forgive in a way that you will not even understand. Mm. Like you won't even be able to understand how it's gonna happen. Yeah. And the seventh is bad things that happen to you. Trials, I oh, shouldn't yeah. say bad things. Trials that expiate. Hardships that Hardships. expiate your sins, yeah. Seven ways, mm. meaning if you do not receive God's mercy, yeah. it's because you were never worthy of receiving it. Because it is, it was literally made so easy for you. But look up the fact that other people can actually do Yeah, that one shocked me. I had no idea about that. My mind was just like, wait, what? Because then what happens if, for example, you don't pray your five prayers, but someone else is always donating you five prayers? 
That I that's that, like that's the thing that I'm like confused at. Maybe maybe it doesn't fulfill your obligations, but it just helps you across up probably, the fins. Probably. You know, you have to do your part as well. Yeah, I don't know. I'll but look into it. But that's crazy. I didn't know. Seven that. ways, bro. Seven ways. But we talked about we talked about Palestine, <laughs> and you mentioned Palestine and and what's happening in Gaza, and. You are right, though. This added a, another level, another layer to this Ramadan. Because even before Ramadan, it really shook us. It really made us focus a lot more about this Ummah. Mm. But I'm just curious to know, what do, you, what do you think this situation has done for this Ummah? Like, how do you think it affected us? Do you think it's positive, negative? I think do you think it helps? I think it's trending in the positive direction, in a, in a stance where it's just like... Muslims are more proud to be Muslims now mm. because of what's happening. Um, and another thing is, there's this um, uh, this quote I read from the Quran, and it says that, do you think you can just stand there and say you believe and not be tested mm. with family, with loss of health, with loss of wealth, with loss of family, with, with you know, like loss of life, like, what, like everything pretty mm. much, hardship. Mm. And when when Allah says this, it only increases them in faith. Mm. Do you get what that means? Mm -hmm. Think about it. So it's like in Palestine, when good, not in only in Palestine. Think about us. When we pray and something good happens to us, our strength, our faith increases in strength because like Allah's truth came. Like when Allah takes something away from you, He replaces it with something better. When that actually happens to you, your faith increases, right? Why? Because it's stated in the Quran. If it's stated in the Quran, you know that, and it comes true, your faith increases because you're like, Allah did say it, mm. and it did come true. Mm. So when Allah says, do you think you will not be tested with loss of family, loss of health, loss of wealth, and you could just stand there and believe? Look at them. Why does their faith increase? Because just because Allah said good things in the Quran and your faith increases, Allah also said this in the Quran. Mm. So when this does happen to you, that should reaffirm your belief in Allah because Allah was not lying. Mm. It's not all good stuff that will reaffirm your faith in Allah. Some things are hard to swallow, but if Allah has said it and it has happened to you in your life, it should reaffirm your faith. Meaning, if you gain stuff from Islam and you see it in the Quran, your faith increases. But now if you have your family members or someone dying, that should also reaffirm your faith. Why? Because Allah did say that too. Mm. You know, it's like two things that He said. Mm. He didn't only say that, pray and get good. Pray and get stuff. He also said there's going to be hardships. Mm. That is what's happening in Palestine. That's what I feel like people are realizing now that the Quran isn't, there's no flaw in the Quran and there's no negativity in the Quran in a sense where it's just like truly negative. Everything in the Quran has, has a purpose and has a value. Because it's come from God. So it's just like, when you really read it with that perspective, it's like you're accepting everything from start to finish. And I feel like as the Muslims are doing that more and more because of what Palestine has done for us, they literally have not asked for money, no, nor food, nor aid, nothing. They gave up on that because they've seen where we're at right now. But yet, they are just doing their due diligence Saying that Allah is sufficient for us and Allah is all we need, pretty much. So it's just like their faith, they are carrying pretty much the Ummah on their back right now. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's where we're at in terms of where Palestine has changed the, the Muslims forever. The whole world is like, I feel like the Muslims are genuinely more connected now for some reason. Like, even though we're not, like me, I said I feel guilty for not doing as much as I did in Ramadan. But that guilt in itself is a new guilt that I, f I formulated, right? So that's like at least a step. Mm -hmm. It might not be a sprint. It might not be a, like a whole, you know, marathon. But it's a step closer, a new guilt that I've formed for the people that I care about now. So I've gained a sense of compassion. Mm -hmm. I've gained a sense of mercy. I've gained a sense of, of reason to, to look around just outside of my bubble, mm -hmm. which is these people, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So, so guilt is good sometimes. A hundred percent. I think that's also what has unified this ummah, to be honest. Because that <laughs> feeling that you have, I think that's a feeling 
and a sentiment that a lot of Muslims actually have mm. as well. And I think there's now a common thread between all Muslims that every single Muslim is thinking about what's happening in Palestine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because it said that this Ummah is like one body. If one part of your body is hurt, you're going to feel it. If your toe is sprained, your mind feels it. Yep. You're aware of it constantly. Yep. And I think that's what we're seeing right now. How are we able to be fully, 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 fully happy mm -hmm. or fully, 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 fully grateful for what we have when we know that there's people suffering? Like, how can you just go and have fun? Yeah. There's always something in the back of your head like, man, but the people in Palestine, they're suffering right now. Right? And the thing is, I, I want you to talk about this one, but this hasn't just impacted Muslims. Yeah. There's a lot of non-Muslims that have been impacted by this because it, just because you're Muslim doesn't mean you're a great person. Just because you're not a, like an, like in Islam, we don't believe that non-Muslims are lower than us. We don't believe any of that. Mm -hmm. A human being has their value with God. Mm -hmm. Like I said in the very beginning of the podcast, it's not about how you f start, it's about how you finish. Yeah. Allah literally says that you could forget him your whole life. You could neglect all your prayers. You could neglect all your donations. You could neglect everything. But if at the end of your life, you turn back and you repent, and you, like, take your shahada pretty much, Allah will forgive you. Why? Because you were always destined to be a good person. Mm. Allah knew that. That's why He gave you that chance. You die the way you live. Mm. You die where you live. Mm. You know? Like, it's just what it is. If you're going to the masjid five times a day, always spending your time at the masjid, you will most likely die in a state of worship. Mm -hmm. If you're always at a club, if you're always listening to music, you will most likely die listening or at that place that you've spent the most time at. Yeah. So a non-Muslim, even at the very end of their life, if they're a genuine person and Allah wants to, they will find it. Mm -hmm. You know, it is what it is. That's why you can never, you can never have levels. Like everyone's level is different. So, but back to my question is, how do you think as a revert, how do you think if you, from, a, from that perspective, how has this Palestinian genocide affected the non-Muslims because bro that oh, is something else that's a whole different wave like think about it there's exactly two waves else. that have just formed it's like two tsunamis that just came out yeah one is for the ummah and one is for the non-Muslims uh, the people that actually care about yeah. humans yeah you know I've actually been thinking about this <laughs> I really have and I think the reason why this has affected non-Muslims so much is because we're seeing the pinnacle of faith mm. in real time. Mm. There's something very interesting. When you think about the Olympics and you, and you notice that records are broken every year, slightly, 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 slightly. You want to know why that happens? Why? Because humans are seeing, oh, wait, we are capable of going that fast. Oh, we are capable mm. of going that fast. Our, our level of belief increases when we see other people increasing as well. Yeah, 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 nature, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. You strive more. It's like, no, going 20 kilometers, that's not, I can go 21. Someone just went 22. Let me try to go 23. That's exactly what's happening with Palestine. People are seeing the level of faith that they have never, ever thought was possible. Mm. They're seeing people that are losing literally everything, everything, mm. but still thinking about God. So still people, thanking God. Still thanking God. Still thinking about God. Still praising God. Still worshiping God. So people are putting themselves in that situation and wondering, what would I do if I was in that situation? Hmm. I probably would be turning away from God. I would be so angry about God. I would be resentful of God. Yeah. So what do they have that's allowing them to have that? Because my faith isn't there. Hmm. It's going way back to what we just talked about, the level of relationship. Hmm. I thought my, my level of relationship was amazing. Hmm. If I'm in that situation, I'm not going to be like that. That's why we're not in that situation. Exactly. So what people are realizing, a lot of non-Muslims, because, bro, I can't even tell you how many non-Muslims have reached out. It actually boggles my mind. But the reason why is because they're, they're exploring Islam. And they're wondering, that's the only thing that's different between us two. They have Islam and I don't have Islam. So let me see if Islam will allow me to get to that level too. Maybe it won't, maybe yeah. it will. Yeah. But at least they're taking that step into it yep and we already know that when you put your heart there it's open it's open because you said you said something so beautiful that every time something that you know that allah promised comes true 
your level of faith increases. Mm -hmm. And we already know that the Quran is perfect. That's why there's so many scientific miracles. Like there's so much objective evidence in the Quran mm. that there's it. It's honest. It honestly takes an irrational mind to think it's not the truth. Yeah, it's just there's way too much evidence. Yeah, which means if anyone even just puts a baby toe into Islam, they'll fall in love. If their hearts are actually pure and soft, they will. Yeah, they absolutely will. There's no way that they won't. I think about I, I think about that in like a do or die situation, like where you have like a million dollars presented it presented in front of you to pick one religion that factually and with evidence makes the most sense. Yeah. If there's a million dollars in front of you, I think a lot of votes would switch. I think so. Because like think about it, like I think so. genuinely, yeah. a lot of votes would switch. Yeah. Because one has. Facts that, like, say you're in a room, no one knows that you're going to win this mill. It's just you, the two options, and mm -hmm. the mill. Mm -hmm. I don't think Islam would be debunked like that because there's just so much, there's literally so many one plus one equals two yeah. that you cannot deny. Yeah, yeah. Because you know? To be honest, bro, that's a big reason why I never resonated with Christianity. Just because I fell in love with it emotionally. Mm. The story is beautiful jesus coming and dying for our sins jesus is amazing now i can just live life now i don't the burden's not on me yeah that is the most beautiful story i've ever heard but then as i looked into it there's so many things logically that just doesn't make sense wait so what do you mean jesus is god and jesus is god's son not just not just that you know how religion is supposed to be practical meaning what's applied in the religion you should be able to apply it in your day-to-day -day life Oh, meaning, yes. if if Jesus, for example, did die for your sins, meaning he took the blame for your thing, why isn't the the high supreme court like that? Why can't a father take the blame for his son's mistake of drunk driving? Mm -hmm. Why can't a father take the sin for his son for domestically abusing a girl or something? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. why is that not the case? Why is it that you you think a human being has a better mindset, a more justice, like a more like a more what's the word like a m fair. more fair approach towards punishment and towards imprisonment than god mm. because think about it so who like there's there's there, there's like a dilemma here mm -hmm. who has a better justice system god or a human being mm. because if it's god then, then why isn't the human it. why why are why are we applying it and if it's a human being if it's a human being then why didn't god then why didn't god it? apply it so it's just like it, it to me that concept does not make sense. Mm. Someone does not bear your sins mm. because you are capable of doing... What's the point of free will if someone else is going to bear your sin? Exactly. There's too many flaws there. But you know what? You know what's so interesting? And we're going on a bit of a tangent now. But something that Islam also helped me find peace with is it allowed me to look back at the Bible now with a new sense of clarity and understanding and actually see that Everything that we're told about Jesus mm. in the Quran is actually in the Bible too. Yeah. It literally is in the Bible yeah. too. The fact that Jesus literally prostrated the same way Muslims do, the same way Moses did, yep. the same way Ibrahim uh, did. Ibrahim yep. did. He literally, Jesus literally prostrated to God. The same way. The exact same way. And said, it's not my will, but your will. Yep. Jesus submitted to God. Yep. Jesus even considered himself a prophet. Yep. These are all examples in the Bible. Jesus said that God is greater than all. He didn't say me and God, or he didn't say I'm greater than all. He said yeah. God is greater than yeah. all. There's that mis There's so many. That examples. misconception is so such a such a fine line, like a thick border between us and like Christianity. Because I feel like just because we don't say Jesus is God, Christians think we devalue Jesus. But Isa, Jesus, is one of the greatest prophets in Islam. Like yeah. he's one of the most beloved. Meaning. We actually follow the teachings of Jesus more than the Christians now. Yeah. Jesus never ate pork. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like there's and back then we don't know why he didn't eat pork. Mm -hmm. Why don't we eat pork now? Think about it. Why? Because it's impure, and because God told us not to. The pig is the only animal that eats its own feces. The pig is the only animal where even if you boil its meat, there's there's um larva and there's there's actual parasites mm -hmm. inside its stream 
the pig is the only animal that when you eat your testosterone levels as a man actually decreases, making your reproduction less viable. Mm. There are so many reasons why Allah has given reason, like no reason, even back then, because Allah knew later on people would find reason. Mm. Mm. Allah doesn't have to give us answers to everything, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Allah is God. Whether you believe in any God, if a commandment comes down, you follow it. Mm. Because you know that He knows more than you. Mm -hmm. And whatever He's giving you is going to be better for you. Mm -hmm. That's literally, that's science catching up. Yeah, science is catching up all the time, bro. All the time, man. All the time. So <laughs> that, literally, that sums it up. That if someone was given a million dollars, I love that you use that example. So many people that even the ones that claim that they're Christian now or Catholic now, they would take so them. So many of them would, would take. Yeah, because they're in their in the privacy of their own, like you know, like they don't have anything to stand up for at that point, like showcase their followers. No one, no one knows about it. If they literally, genuinely, and you know why he said in a separate room, because when there's a million dollars on the table, all they'll want to do is with their heart figure out which What's one is the, the truth? truth, so they can take the million dollars. Yeah. yeah. It will lead them to Islam, every yeah. single one. Yeah. 100%. The last thing I'll say that I just realized right now, because we were talking about the attributes of Allah, the <laughs> attributes of God. One of the attributes of God is the fact that Allah is the most wise. Hmm. Right? If he is the most wise. Hakim. Hakim? That's Hakim. Hakim. Why would he present you with options? And why would he present you with a religion that has flaws or mm. contradictions or errors mm. or that can be debunked or that could be interpreted in different ways if he's the most wise and you say for example you have a child and you want your child to know the truth are you going to present him with things that can be that he can question you with mm. are you going to present your child with something that is just laser focused truth right you're going to go with the the latter yeah so why in what world does it make sense to follow a religion that is strictly just emotional that's strictly just blind faith. I watched a video of, of someone questioning all the things about Jesus. And at the end, the pastor said, son, you just have to have faith. Yeah, just have faith. Yeah. That's a cop out. That's a cop out. <laughs> that's a, that's cop, a cop out. out. Because God is the most wise. You should be able to be appeased mentally yeah. and emotionally. Yeah. Logically and emotionally, yeah. man. If someone came up to me and just told me, Islam, this is why you do, this is why you do. Like, this is why another reason. When I was a kid, bro, a lot of the things about Islam was, you just have to do it. Five times a day, you have to pray, you just have to do it. That's so right. Fasting, you just have to do it. Why? You're going to go to hell. Like, it's such a bad way to, to explain anything. Yes. Like, if you're following something as a lifestyle, you need to understand why. Yes. Bottom line. Yes. Because even using fasting... There's reasons why. Yeah. There's even health reasons why. Yeah. Your exactly. body literally heals itself. Yeah. Exactly. Everything has a reason. Yeah. And that's what this religion allows. And that's why our faith is so strong. Because we feel like we're not following something blindly. Alhamdulillah. Which is beautiful. But yeah, so that's what I that's what I think <coughs> it is done for, for non Muslims. It just gave them something to yeah. strive towards in a real way. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I, I know this is Ramadan and there's probably there's just one thing I wanted to talk about, and um, as we're entering the ten days, and it's the uh, the prayers and the duas that you make. Mm -hmm. Duas again is actually making like wishes for what you want, what you need, prayers for other people, other things, uh, family, friends, health, wealth, things like that. Um, I I saw a video on TikTok about duas and the the capacity of duas, meaning like, don't just think about your duas in the in the mindset that you have available for you, you know, for example, like, for example, like, if you think about it, we make dua with what's limited in our brains. Mm. You make dua for more money, a better car, better financial situation, a better, better health if you're sick, better, like, drive, motivation, things like that. But sometimes you need to think what realm is Allah in? We are in a realm of 3D, meaning everything we see is everything we can imagine. Mm -hmm. We can't imagine anything we have never seen, mm -hmm. correct? But Allah is something that is so beyond that imagination, mm -hmm. so beyond the, the limitation of our brains. Mm -hmm. So sometimes your du'as, you should make 
which go beyond your your limit, limited mind. Mm. And what I mean by this is, for example, you're rushing or you're, you're trying to focus on your deen throughout the day, but you have work, then you have to go to the gym, you have a family, you have friends, you just don't have time. 24 hours in a day is not enough for your life. A 5D dua would be, an example of this would be, O oh Allah, place more barakah, meaning blessings, in my time. Mm. Time is not uh, like bound by 3D. Mm. Time is something Allah can change, whatever. Mm. Like stretch time. Stretch time. Literally stretch time. Stretching time is something that's beyond 5D. Mm. So when you pray for things like that, one, it strengthens your faith because you're, you're, you're saying something so astro- like so crazy mm. that only Allah will appreciate it because Allah's like, whoa. He recognizes, he recognizes what I am capable of. You say that to any other human being, they'll be like, you're crazy. Mm. But you know who he is and you know what he's capable of. So you're making these crazy... Powerful du'as, stretching time. Another example would be, for example, having more blessings in your money. You can't save, but all of a sudden you see your money also stretching, mm. meaning a dollar goes way further. Mm. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. So the, this is what I'm just saying. So during these last 10 days, it's just like focus a lot more on, on thinking about expanding your reach with Allah, like in terms of your du'as, like mm. where can you go? And don't ask for, like you can ask for like the basic things of course but like sometimes push your limits to like think through what Allah is capable of that will strengthen your faith mm-hmm. plus it will give you some amazing beautiful mm-hmm. results it's so true bro do you finally get the 3D 5D thing I do I do I do Word this guy was it. not understanding the 3D 5D concept for so long bro no I get it I get it because we're we're confined to the the three dimensions yeah but Allah is way greater yeah that's why it's even said that in paradise there's certain pleasures that we will never be able to understand. Yeah. Because we can just see, we can hear, we can taste, we can yep. touch, right? We can smell. That's it. But in Jannah, in heaven, there are senses that we will not even, we're not even exposed to here. Yeah. Like we have five senses here. Imagine how many we might have there. Which is, <laughs> anyways, bro. What I'll say about do us too, and what I've, I've noticed helped me a lot is just go deeper in your do us. Like, just go way deeper. Don't scratch the surface mm. of your du'as. Yeah. Because I'll give you a quick example. When you pray for a job, for example, you're not just praying for a job. Like, you're praying for an opportunity mm. to be able to spend more money for the sake of Allah. Mm. You want to be able to provide for the people that you love. Mm. That all of a sudden becomes, it's not about you. It's actually for Allah. Mm. You're praying for the sake of Allah. You're asking things for the sake of you're Allah. You're making... Your du'as, a form of worship at that exactly. point. Exactly. And it, the reason why you're going to have so much more belief in that is because you're essentially praying for something that you know Allah would be more than happy to give you. Yeah. Because what you're praying for is going to bring you closer to Him. Yeah. Which is our purpose in life. Yeah. To get close to Allah anyways. Yeah. So don't just pray for a spouse. Don't just pray for a job. Don't just pray for money. Don't pr- Think about why would Allah want you to have this. And what, you, can, what can you do with and it? And what can you do with it? If your mind can't bring you there, that means you shouldn't even be praying for that yeah. in the first place. Hundred percent. That's so well put. Go deeper. Yeah. Literally go deeper. But I'm about to go off, inshallah. Inshallah. In these last ten days. Same. In these last ten days, because another thing that that does for you, by the way, is it widens your perspective. Because the deeper you go into your prayers, and the 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 more at the root that you go mm. to what you actually want mm-hmm. slash need the more you're going to be able to recognize when Allah places that in your life. If you're just praying for that one job or you're just praying for that one person, you're going to be tunnel vision. You're only looking for things that affirm that. But how do you even know that's what you should have? Exactly. How do you know that's what you want and need? Yeah. You only know what you want. You do not Not know know what what you you need. need. Yeah. Absolutely not. So when you pray for an opportunity to spend money for the sake of Allah, all of a sudden, everything becomes a possibility. All these things become signs now. And it may not even be a job. Yep. What if it's a business opportunity? What if someone walks, literally a random lady on the street comes to you and says, oh, I, I just need, I wish I had someone to help me with this. Mm. If you're thinking of that job, you're just going to be like, move, move, lady. Yeah. But you don't know what she could have gave you afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. Allah plans. Allah is the most subtle. Yeah. His plans are, they come to you in a way that you will never imagine. And he, I think he does that on purpose. Allah. I think he wants you to know you would have never, never done this done for yourself. This, yeah. 
no matter how hard you try, no matter how much you plan, yeah. you would have never done it this way. That's the love. Because we're like caterpillars in a maze. Allah's the bird. Yeah. Allah knows what's around the corner. We don't know what's around the corner. Yeah. We don't even know who's behind that door over mm-hmm. there. Allah is the greatest man. Allahu Akbar for sure. But the last thing I want to ask you is just <laughs> final, final thoughts. Like, What advice would you give to this ummah? What advice would you give to Muslims? Whether they're going through low iman or not. Just what's one thing that you wish someone told you early on that you just hold on to? Any fleet in advice? Just continue walking. Hmm. Like, forward. Like, you're going to walk back ten times. Like, you're going to do things like fall off ten million times. Hmm. Just keep walking. Because hmm. that's the only piece of advice I tell myself when I keep falling. Hmm. Just keep going. At the, at the end of the day, bro, like, there's, like, your journey is different than every single person's. So you're literally not on anyone else's lane. You're on your own lane. So meaning you fall back 10 steps, you're still the first person in your journey. Meaning there's no second place. Like you're not, there's no first place before you. There's no last place after you. You're still the only person on this road. Meaning you falling back does not change anything. Just keep going. Just keep stepping. Just keep going. That's all I can tell myself. Because if I tell myself like when you fall and you compare yourself like that person is doing so well, that person, you feel so, so much anxiety and you feel so much distress that you're like, I can never catch up, mm. but it's not about catching up. Mm. It's about just keep going. Like the whole thing is about your, your quality of your walk from the start to the finish. Mm. Walk. Mm. And how are you walking? When you fall, how long are you sitting down mm. versus how fast are you getting back up and saying, yo, back up, back up. Because bro, I've done the same thing over and over and over again for so long. And it just, every time, you do it, you fall, and you're just like, you're taking the longest break to get back up because you're like, I need time, like, I'm a failure, I'm this, I'm this. And you're just talking to yourself in a way that you would never talk to someone else that you'd give advice to. And, but, so you're treating yourself way worse. Just get back up, go do your repentance, go do your toba, and just keep walking, bro. Like, at the end of the day, Allah created you and I to sin. And if we did not sin... He would replace us with people that would sin as long as they would turn back to Allah in forgiveness. Because one thing I'm just reading so much is Allah's forgiveness. And you don't ask Allah for forgiveness as if that He can forgive. You don't say, oh, Allah forgive me because I know you you can forgive me. Of course He can. It's Allah loves to forgive. Mm -hmm. You ask Allah for forgiveness because He loves to forgive. Mm -hmm. Not because He can forgive. Allah can do anything. Allah literally loves to forgive. So why wouldn't I use that attribute to get forgiveness instead? You don't feel guilty that way. You feel less guilty that way. Because if someone loves something, you're not saying, can you please do this for me? Like, I don't know if you've done this for... If you love something, I know you've done it for me. Because you love it too. That's crazy. You get what I mean? A hundred percent. That's it, bro. Like, it's almost like an honor to ask for yeah. repentance. Yeah, keep, keep stepping, bro. Keep going. You know, as you were saying that, bro... It made me think of something that always gets to me so hectically. And I want you to speak on it. But it's the difference between, or the reason why a love placed us at such a high level compared to angels. You talk about it. Bro, I love this so much, bro, because angels were created to worship Allah. They have no choice. No free will. No free will. That's literally their purpose. When Adam was created, all the angels prostrated. And Allah said that this is the greatest creation. Why? Adam is capable of such destruction. You're giving him all that free will to be able to do whatever he wants? Mm -hmm. The reason why we are the most beloved creature of Allah is because we actually turn back to Allah. Exactly what you said. When we fall, we get back up and turn to Allah. Mm. That is so much more beautiful, even from an outside perspective, than someone that is than something that's created mm. to worship you. We're choosing mm-hmm. to worship Allah, even when we don't want to. Mm. We're choosing to. When we wake up and we're tired, we choose to pray. When we're hungry, we choose to fast. When we're lazy, we choose to read the Quran. When we feel greedy, we choose to donate. When we feel like, oh, I'd rather go to Hawaii, we choose to go and do our Hajj. We choose to do our Umrah. Mm. 
That is such a beautiful thing. 100%. Such a beautiful thing. My advice that I would give, and I'll give advice to, to non-Muslims because I know there's a lot of non-Muslims that watch our content and that watch Islamic content in general. What I would say is following your sentiments of just walk, just take your time. One step. The thing that I know for a fact, because I live this, I know for a fact a barrier to Islam for a lot of people is seeing the end product. Mm. Oh, I have a friend, he prays five times a day. I'm not trying to... I can't, five times like, a day. how am I going to do five times a day? They, I have my schedule, I have my life. How am I going to do five times? They fast for 30 days? Down to what? To dusk? That's like 12 hours. I can't do all of that. Literally, it took 23 years for Islam to come into full fruition. 23 mm -hmm. years. That means Allah already knows that this was supposed to be the slowest and most beautiful journey. Mm -hmm. You are actually supposed to take your time. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to take little baby steps. You're not supposed to worry about how... Better example, drive-in. When you learn how to drive, does, does someone just place you into a car and say, go? No. You first learn how to brake. You first learn how to indicate. This is the wheel. This is how yeah. you turn it. Now turn it the other way. Yeah. This is how you accelerate. This is how you slow down. You take your time. And what happens, what happens when you look at someone who's been driving for such a long time and you try to copy that? You get into a crash. You will crash. Yeah. That's burnout. Burn you literally yeah. crash. But what will happen if you slowly take your time, you'll eventually look back and be like, holy... How does anyone not know how to drive? Exactly. Like, when I look at people not knowing how to drive, I We think, get angry. Like, I was just like, how? We're like, move, Yeah, man. like, how? But you're everyone is at their own journey, yep. and Allah already knows the pace that you need. Yep. If you think in yourself that, I don't know how I'm going to get there, Allah already knows. knows. Yeah. Allah knows what's in your heart more than you know what's in your heart. So trust that Allah will let you get to that point slowly. Yeah. If it's going to take 23 years, fine. If it's going to take a month, fine. Let Allah be in control of that. Take one step towards Allah, He takes ten towards you. Exactly. Walk towards Him, He runs towards you. Yes. Speak to Him in a group. Speak about Allah in a group. <laughs> he will be speaking about you in an even greater group. Yep. So literally, do not worry about it. Let Allah take control. Just you, just focus on your little yep. steps. And you will be good to go. Yep. And the final thing I'll say, because I know this is another hesitation, is you don't have to feel as though you need to tell anyone. Yeah. You don't have to tell a soul. Allah knowing that you're a Muslim, or Allah even knowing that you're taking steps towards learning about God. That's between you and Him. But that's enough. That's enough. Him yeah. knowing is enough. Like, you're, you're Gucci. You're good. Yep. It is enough. So don't worry about your coworkers. Don't worry about your family. Don't worry about your friends. If you truly have a desire to learn about God, if you truly want to yeah. know about our Creator, take your time. Yep. And then well you're put. good to go, bro. I think that's it, man. I think that's it. Shout out to Nigel. Hey. Big shout out. My guy. Nigel made it. Nigel, Nigel made, made it. it. Follow him on IG. Best uh, videographer out there. Just playing it out. <laughs> All right. Salam alaikum, everyone. Alaikum salam.